Hello everyone. So quick uh, introductions of uh, Let's talk a little bit about, uh, about myself. Um, so I'm uh, Sebastian Bergogneau. I've been working in uh, IT for uh, 20 years now. Uh, I've started in uh, enterprise application integration, EI, uh, back in the late uh, 90s. And uh, now I'm uh, working on uh, those new technology like service mesh. We had the first uh, Service Mesh meetup in Paris yesterday, and it was a yeah a great a great success for um, for a start. Uh, who was there in uh, 2013 at API Days? One, two, three, two, three, maybe. Okay. So I was amazed at the, at this time that we were uh, 200 people uh, interested in API. So I imagine today. Uh, so many interesting uh, API, it's uh, just uh, so, so, uh, so great because it means that really technology is ruling the, the world and ruling the, uh, how we, uh, we are changing our, um, the way we live, in fact. And that's what we uh, will talk in a second because we will talk about uh, smart building and building it's where we live and where we work. Um, so today I'm a manager of a company uh, called Next Digital which is part of uh, Devo Team Group. So Next Digital, we are focusing on bringing consultancy to our customers on helping them to their transformation journey from, uh, I would say, uh, legacy uh, IT to open IT uh, using API, distributed, distributed architecture, and so on. Of course, we are leveraging all those uh, DevOps and uh, agile approach. Uh, if you want to, to uh, contact me, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, or you can find me on the uh, DSE uh, booth, which, are, which is also um, a part of the Team Group. So, what is a, a smart smart building? Does anyone has an idea of uh, what a smart building is? Yeah, no. Are you living in smart building? Working in smart building, maybe. So if we look at, at the Gartner uh, hype cycle, we see that, uh, so it's not very readable, but you can find it on the uh, internet. The, there are a few uh, points here that are related to, to, uh, to smart building and uh, at the peak of the, uh, the, peak of the uh, cycle. For instance, you have a smart workplace, digital twin, IoT, mixed reality, uh, what else? Uh, connected home, augmented reality. So a lot of uh, items uh, that are very hype and uh, very uh, trendy today are related to smart building. But what is a smart building? So first we can ask ourselves, what is a smartphone? So how do you, uh, how would you define a, a smartphone? Any idea? You can what? Sorry. Apps. Exactly apps. That's uh, that's the main point. That's what makes a, a phone smart. In fact, coming from this uh, old phone, if we add an OS and an app store into it, then you will have a smartphone. That's what happened when uh, uh, Apple launched the uh, the iPhone, and uh, they transform our phone to smartphone. And it was at the same time that uh, APIs really uh, start to to, uh, to, uh, to to uh, yeah to get more and more important because by building application on your phone you need to uh, fill them with uh, data and the data at this time were coming from maybe SOAP or WSDL XML uh, uh, workload and it was so heavy that we had to, to uh, imagine something new that's when uh, web API JSON and rest really uh, became successful because it was lighter easier to to use and uh, so less expensive in terms of uh, bandwidth consumption oops So yes, so if we apply that to a building, so how do you make a building smart? <laughs> By adding application on top of it, right? So 
So that's it. So you, if you add, uh, if you are able to add an operating system and apps to your building, then you will have a smart building. And once you have a smart building, or by in, in order to be able to build a smart building, first thing you can you will do is um, create a digital twin of this building. So what is a, a digital twin? It's a digital representation of a physical uh, item, like a, a building. So you, have, you need to have um, uh, capabilities to uh, describe your building and uh, all the parts that are making your building, even the materials, in a digital way. So there are a lot of tools that will help you to do that. Uh, we are partnering with a company called uh, Spinalcom. So Spinalcom, they are making the uh, OS of the building. They are making the uh, digital twin uh, possible by offering uh, this uh, set of tools. We won't uh, focus too much on Spinalcom today, but if you have questions on them, you can uh, contact me as well. And once you have this digital twin, you will be able to represent your building uh, in a digital manner. So you will be able to, to create those uh, 3D models of your building, for instance, and also visualize on these 3D models uh, what's happening in your building. For instance, here you have a, a data center, so you are able to Today we are able to, to uh, make a, a 3D model of a data center with all the uh, racks of the data center, all the computers in the data center, and so monitor and visualize what happens in the data center in a very visual manner. So you are able to see at a glance uh, what kind of uh, racks are overheated, which ones are okay because they are green, etc., etc. So if you have to uh, to send someone to fix a bug or to change a, a rack or to change a computer, it's very easy because you can you get, the guy can visualize very easily where is the problem is uh, physically in the space in the room and go directly to there. Uh, same thing for a standard building, you can. Uh, very easily visualize uh, what are the what doors are open, what doors are closed, what doors are having problems, or for security reason, in, in, at a glance, immediately you can see where you have to to go uh, to in case of uh, an issue. So every, all, all that is possible because you have this digital representation of the building that will really helps to um, to create a 3D model and to send data uh, from all the back end from all from the building, from all the uh, IoT device to this 3D model. So why a smart building? Uh, many, uh, many reasons. So first for conception and construction of the building. So if you have um, a digital twin of the building, you can very easily share among the different uh, parties building uh, the building uh, all the needed data. So they can share the, the, the maps and the, the blueprints of the building, the 3D models, but also uh, put annotation on this uh, on, on this 3D model, uh, put explanation for uh, all the uh, the different third parties. Once the conception is done, you, you can also use this 3D model for construction. Um, it means that you can. Uh, during the construction process, uh, bring all the needed materials or all dedicated team uh, when they are needed on site, because it costs a lot to uh, when you're building a, a new uh, a new office, for instance, in Paris. If you have to bring materials and put them on the sidewalk, uh, the city will make you pay for that. So you cannot bring everything for the building uh, globally. You have to to bring it every day, what is needed for the day. So using um, all this new IT and uh, new um, um, digital twin capabilities, it also help on that. It will, once the building will be done, it will also help on maintenance, because you can uh, imagine you are in charge of maintenance of a building. Uh, if uh, you are able to, um, when you walk into the building with your tablet, able to to, uh, to point on the 3D model uh, where you find a stain or a malfunctioning door or whatever, uh, it will be easier to tell the guy in charge of fixing it uh, where the problem is. Um, same for monitoring, security, surveillance. If there is a, a fire, if there is a, any issue, it will be immediately located on this 3D model. And if there is a fire in one room, you can tell everyone to, to, to go out of the building, uh, avoiding that specific uh, 
area where the fire is. Also, um, smart building will make uh, the building a better place to, to work, uh, especially if you work in flex office. You can, uh, for instance, imagine book uh, your uh, desk in a flex office uh, using the 3D model uh, uh, digital twin. You can. Uh, uh, we, we had a, um, also a project with a, a, a customer um, in charge of managing a building where people were um, working, sharing, uh, working, um, working floors and also uh, uh, apartments where people were living. But there the, the were a limit, a very limited the number of parking places. So we had uh, this algorithm. Uh, to, uh, to share the, the parking place between people who were there during the day, meaning those guys working in the building at the of, in, this of, in the offices, and people coming at night in the parking because they were living there. So with our tools, we were able to, to, uh, to, to, um, to have a better uh, usage of the parking place. Uh, also, we can make uh, the building a better place to live because you can have electronic crawling shutter controlled by your iPhone, you can have smart locks so you can open the door even if you are not at home, you can check who's at the door and open it from your office for instance. So many, many usage of a smart, of a smart building. So back to um, the operating system, so really the operating system will be the, the, the backbone of the digital twin. Uh, like the operating system is the backbone of your PC of your, or your iPhone. So you will have this building, your building with all the IoT devices that will send information and all those, all those services available. Uh, services can be uh, uh, smart mailboxes for instance or laundry services or whatever services are available in the building. On top of that, you need to put an abstraction layer like uh, an OS and then on this abstraction layer, you can have apps that we access to the different services, to the different devices through this operating system. So very similar to what you will find on a phone, iPhone, or on a PC. And the good news is that you can build that with API. So how do we build that? Uh, basically with many um, different pieces. So you have your devices and services uh, in, in the, at the back end. On the devices, you can put um, an IoT middleware or any kind of ESB platform and API on top of that. And same for the services. To share services and to manage services, you can put a middleware like microservices or again an ESB platform and expose API. Last layer will be uh, an API gateway to expose and secure access to all the service and all the devices. You can also add um, an API dev portal if you want. So you can, uh, it will enable, help uh, or let people imagine new usage based on those API. And uh, last but not least, you have all the apps that will be used using the different APIs proposed by the building to create great usage you can imagine. Any questions so far? Yes? Yes. We can do both, in fact. We can do both, and we will see why. The question was, uh, do we build smart building, or do we make building smart? Uh, so we can do both, because let, let's go deeper in a case study and we can see if it answers your question. So the, um, we had uh, this, um, this customer who came, uh, came to us and said, okay, we, we are building a new uh, residence for students. Uh, it's up in uh, the north of uh, Paris, in south of Paris, sorry, in, uh, in uh, Saclay, next, next to uh, Polytechnic. So the, 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 the residence was supposed to, uh, to host uh, foreign students. They want to be very attractive. So they wanted to, be, to make a, a very innovative building, really a smart building. So they, um, they, um, they had uh, many, many um, services provider inside this building, like uh, 
every door are very smart with smart locks and uh, smart doors. They had these uh, smart mailboxes uh, facilities as well. Uh, when you receive the, uh, a mail or a, a, a package, uh, it, it is not sent to your specific mailbox. It's it's put in a, in one mailbox, and um, and you are notified by by the mailbox that you received a package in the number five mailbox, for instance. They have also uh, the uh, laundry service, a smart laundry service, when you can uh, book uh, a washing machine, you can uh, be notified when the, uh, the the wash is over, etc., etc. You have also an agenda. Uh, to, um, to access all the, um, the events that happened in the, in the building. And the objective was to build an app to access all those different services made by different service providers, to propose an API portal as well, because the residence was made for students, so they imagined that students, uh, based on those API, will be able to create new uh, usage, new, new apps as well. They wanted to be um, reusable and also evolutive. We had some constraints, very short time frame. It had to be done in two months because they spent a lot of time uh, before contacting us on thinking what they want to, to, how they want to be, to make this building innovative. We had no IT infrastructure. That's the point of uh, most of the building. It's kind of answer to your question. Most of the buildings, they are not coming with a, an IT infrastructure or data center or not even a PC inside it. So you have to, to build it around it. They have a lot of different service providers with different protocols, language, security, uh, of course. Uh, everyone's not, nobody's talking the same language. And last but not least, very low budget because uh, the maintenance of, a, of a, the, the build of a building can be expensive, but the maintenance of the building is still very, very low. And this is um, really a, a vertical um, construction where IT is very, very poor. So how did we do that? So this is what we, uh, we, we, we had, basically. We had a, a mobile app, a dev portal, a bunch of service providers. Some of those had API, and uh, some did not. So first thing we, um, we had to do is to uh, make those service providers without API able to expose API. So um, we put a microservices in front of those service providers and um, make them uh, able to, to communicate through APIs. Okay, for first, first step. Once this was done, we worked on the process microservices, which will transform those only technical API in uh, more uh, services like API, uh, like for instance, when a new student comes to the residence, all the different service providers need to be notified. So this is something you will do in the process uh, microservice. This, so the process microservice are really the orchestration of calling all the other technical APIs. And on top of that, we put uh, an API gateway to secure everything, to manage everything. And uh, if you see, uh, once this is done, it's very easy to add a new service provider. Because if you add a new service provider, if it comes with an API, you just connect to the API gateway. If it does not have an API, we just build a microservice on top of it and make it enable to um, to connect to uh, through API and then connect it to the rest of the system. And same for the process. If we imagine new process and add the new uh, business rules, it's very easy to, uh, to deploy, to, to create those new business rules, develop microservice, expose API again through the gateway. A little bit of uh, technique now, because just to, to, to tell you which technology we use. So for building the microservices and deploy them, as we had no IT infrastructure, we went to the cloud. We, uh, it was very easy and very quick for us to, to, um, to use Amazon Lambda. So that's what we used. We used Amazon Lambda to develop all these microservices. On top of Amazon Lambda uh, microservices, we put uh, Kong API Gateway, which is a very light and very powerful API Gateway. 
And, uh, and also we had Kong as our main API gateway to secure all the access to, uh, to our APIs. Um, last, last point of this slide, um, you can see that we, are, we uh, built, uh, we made an architecture on three layers which you will most of the time find in an API architecture because we, we have those very atomic technological microservices API uh, at the back end. On top of that, you have those process microservices and API doing all the business logic. And at the end, you have the exposition API which will expose your uh, API to the rest of the world. So it allows us also to have different kind of API. So uh, API available to everyone in the building, API available to everyone, even if they are not in the building, API for those guys in uh, charge of managing the building, so different rights uh, to, to use different APIs depending who you are. So why did we use um, Lambda for that? Um, because Lambda really is helpful with to, with, if you start from scratch, because it comes with uh, everything to, to, uh, to build a microservice. You just have to put your code and the rest is ready. <laughs> it's just completely a serverless, so you just focus on your code. You can come with your own language. You can do um, your microservices in uh, Node.js, Python, uh, Java, etc. So it was very helpful for us because we had multiple teams and different people. Also, the backend services were using different languages, so it was good to, to have this possibility to mix different languages. And it's also uh, very easy to, um, to connect with Kong. We'll see why in a few seconds. And last point, um, we were very happy as well to use all the, the rest of the uh, AWS ecosystem, especially uh, Cognito, which is an identity provider. So everyone who's using the uh, API needs to um, first to, to, uh, to identify through uh, Cognito. We are using DynamoDB as well to, um, to host our data. So we are leveraging the rest of Amazon uh, services as well. And, and Kong API Gateway, uh, we use it because it's a very light gateway. So we very easily to, to, to deploy Kong in, on top of each microservices. It's very high performance as well, easy to install and manage. Uh, you have many workshops in, uh, during the API days if you want to uh, to see Kong uh, in action and see how easy to, easy to uh, install. It has a Lambda plugin. So the job of the Lambda plugin is to transform uh, an API request into uh, Lambda function calls and then give back the return of the function uh, to the API, re API request. And it also have, very important for us, a, a dev portal. That's a reason also why we did not use Amazon API Gateway because it does not have a, a dev portal. So next step on this project will be to uh, add an IoT middleware to be able to uh, connect all the uh, IoT uh, devices which are not coming uh, through a service provider. Create a digital twin, because it does not exist yet, so you can be able to uh, use a 3D model. And then invent new usage. They were thinking uh, uh, at the beginning to, to create games inside the building using the 3D models and the digital twin. If you want more details, not specifically on the building itself, but how we build that. We have a workshop at 11 uh, on how to build a web application using Kong and Amazon Lambda. So quite similar to, to, to what we did for this, uh, for this building. So um, to answer your question that you had a few minutes earlier, so this can be done in any kind of building. In fact, as soon as you have service, you can expose those service uh, to, through a, a mobile or web app. Uh, <coughs> sorry even if the building was not smart at the beginning. And as soon as the building ev dev uh, evolves in a smarter building, because you will add uh, IoT or API uh, enabled uh, uh, devices, also you can make it very smart by using microservices uh, and API gateways. I'm done. So thank you.